Hello everyone, it's Avery Dawnside and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be starting my long series of training time with the new horses that I got from my shopping spree that you guys saw. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click on it, I'll have it linked on the iCard. And today we're going to be training Bear. I absolutely adore this horse. I think it's so cute. But I told you guys to expect a lot of training videos, except today there's a twist. So I've never done a story time training video, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. If you do enjoy this type of video, please let me know down below in the comments because I have so many stories that I could tell you guys it's not even funny. But today I'm going to be telling you about my interesting roommate experience. So as many of you know, I am currently enrolled in university. I'm studying psychology and I'm graduating a year early, so I will be finished after next year, which is super duper exciting. But also, when you live in university, you have to usually live with roommates. Um, not always, but at least for my university, you have to live with roommates. Um, for your first year well i guess you don't have to live with roommates but you have to live in dorms and it's cheaper to live in dorms if you live with a roommate so that's where our story begins and i want to preface this with my living experience didn't get bad until this past year um and the beginning of the story is totally great. I had a really good experience. Um, it just kind of crumbled into pieces later down the road, but we're going to get into that. So my living experience to begin with, like I said, wasn't bad. Um, I didn't know anyone going to the university that I was going to from high school. So I joined a Facebook group like you usually do, and I found a roommate through there. So I had gotten accepted to the place that I currently go to college um, a bit later than you traditionally do. So I was a little behind on schedule anyways, but I made my cute little Facebook post about what I'm like, included some pictures of myself, you know, the whole shebang. And finally, a girl commented and she seemed super duper nice and just up my alley so we started to talk and it's kind of awkward doing these things um because you know you're just like hey like i see your interests um we want to live together it's it's very abrupt but we hit it off right away and seemed pretty similar so we decided to get a dorm together and keep in mind, I had never met this girl before. You typically don't meet your roommates until the time that you move in, but I was lucky enough that we weren't far away enough in my state where we couldn't meet up, so we did meet up. So we met halfway in between the points that we lived and got coffee, and we ended up talking for eight hours, like a solid eight hours start to close in this coffee shop and we like really hit it off she was really awesome super nice and it just was a really good experience so i was excited to go into living um in the dorm so we get to the dorm everything's good um nothing like no red flags or anything and we did have, I guess, different living styles, I would say, different personality traits. We were similar in the fact that we complemented one another, but we had different things that we like to divide our time to. So this girl and I, we were living together and it's fine, but she likes to do things. Um, I guess you, I would say she was more outgoing than I was. I am an outgoing person, but I'm definitely a home buddy, uh, meaning like I like to go and hang out with people, but it's not my top priority if that makes sense in college a lot of people like to go out and party and all that stuff and that's just not really up my alley i definitely prefer just like watching movies with friends and stuff like that um rather than your typical college experience if you're catching up what i'm putting down um anyways so because of this there were some times when she just would want to go out and do things and i was just wasn't really wasn't really my vibe so anyways, I started to date my past significant other. Um, we're no longer together for all of you that have been asking, um, but that's okay. And I started to date him and he went to the same university. And my roommate also started to date someone from our university as well. And I guess this is where the first kind of red flag was. And I will admit that I spent a lot of time with that significant other at school just because it was nerve wracking. I was away from home. He was kind of like a security blanket to me. and. I just really enjoyed spending my time with him and like our friends that we had make rather than the roommate friends that I had and with my roommate because I started to quickly realize that we weren't as similar as I had thought. So she started dating her significant other as well and 
she was also the same way she liked to really spend a lot of time with him and this was sort of the red flag because as you know well you might not know it's different for every university but in my college at least um basically the style of dorm that i was living in is if you kind of look at it like the arena it's one big room but then there's one bed over here and one bed over there all you get is one room and like a closet and you share everything there's not a whole lot of privacy um, and there was a community bathroom meaning it's kind of like a public bathroom with showers and stuff like that um, on your floor so we did not have a lot of privacy and obviously with her having a significant other who was also the same age my significant other at the time was a year older than me so he had an apartment that I could just go hang out at and he had his own like private room so we had a little more leeway on being able to hang out just one-on-one -on -one. but my roommate had a boyfriend who also lived in the same style dorm as us so he had to be over a lot and they just spent a lot of time together and it was really overwhelming because the room was small enough where with two people, just me and my roommate, it was overwhelming. But with three people, when she would ask to have her boyfriend sleep over, it just got awkward and it made me really uncomfortable. Um, and I kind of tried to bring this up, but it just, yeah, I'm not the most confrontational person and I guess it's my fault, but um, it just got really uncomfortable for me and was just not the best. So she, this, this guy, her boyfriend, would sleep over like as much as he could, I guess. Um, and I, I did eventually put that place in rule where it was like, okay, if I um, am not at the dorm for a night, he's more than welcome to sleep over. But it's just kind of like uncomfortable for me to have you guys like snuggling and doing whatever in the corner while I am also on the other side of the room. And it just was awkward. <laughs> so that was the first red flag. And this went on for the entire year. And it just stuff started to happen and it was really uncomfortable and you could definitely tell that my roommate and I were starting to butt heads a little bit but in a petty way I guess um because neither of us would really say anything I mean I said the thing about how I was uncomfortable about the boyfriend thing and she kind of made adaptations to it but not really in my opinion um and I was just so tired of living there. I didn't like it. I didn't like not having privacy. Um, thank goodness I didn't have a YouTube channel because that would have been absolutely impossible. And it was just really overwhelming because I like to have my alone time. Um, I get really socially exhausted and living with people and constantly interacting with people was really hard for me. Um, and so luckily, it was an unfortunate circumstance that my university did close down because of the sickness, but I did get the chance to move home earlier than expected, and this was such a wave of relief for me. I was so ready to be moved out of my dorm and just be back in my own household and not have to deal with that anymore because just lots of red flags. I knew she had been talking behind my back to one of our other friends um, and stuff like that. So it just wasn't the most comfortable environment. And that's not the end of that story. So things get a little bit interesting because earlier in that year, basically the way it works in university is if you want to live in an apartment instead of a dorm the year after you have to sign the apartment pretty early and get a lease going so we had moved into the college um in at the end of august and then you have to usually sign a lease by september or even october october november is pushing it a little bit but we decided um, we'd become pretty good friends with one of the roommates next door to us and then my roommate and I all decided to sign an apartment. At the time, this had seemed like a, a good idea, but looking back, I really should not have signed it just because I already wasn't comfortable with the living situation. I had already seen some red flags, but I didn't really have a lot of other friends at the university yet, so um, especially ones that I would have lived with and I didn't want to go in random again so I just went ahead and signed the lease with them flash forward to the end of the year where I'm like already sick of my roommate a little bit but we're making it work it's just we're not like in the best situation but it's not the worst it's tolerable we're still friends everything's fine um and it just kind of gave me a lot of anxiety so once I had moved out because of the illness and figured um finished the year later at my house just online um 
It was really up in the air on if we were going to return back to campus because we weren't sure if we were going to have in-person classes or online classes the year after. Lo and behold, we had online classes, but you cannot get out of your apartment lease. And we didn't just want to waste a bunch of money um, that we had spent to pay for rent and everything. So I moved into my apartment, which is where you guys know the Empty Classroom Chronicles begin. And I always said that um, it's because my roommates don't know and everything. And I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about that. So the Empty Classroom Chronicles, if you guys don't know what that is, basically when I lived in this apartment with my roommates, we were constantly home because we always did online classes. So it's not like we really had anywhere to go. It's just we were at home all the time and our walls were extremely thin. And even so, you can just always hear what we're doing. So I was definitely not going to share that I had a YouTube channel or that it was a children's horse game because they wouldn't have understood it and they are very... They were very judgmental type people and I knew that in my heart so I was like absolutely not we're not telling them so I would sneak away to one of the closed off buildings on campus every time I needed to film a video and I would sit in an empty classroom and film my videos and come home and edit them and I always said that I was going to study and they never really knew where I would go but I would leave for multiple hours and film a bunch of videos and they just thought I was studying, but I was actually filming YouTube videos. So that is how I was able to be a YouTuber all of last year. It was definitely a struggle, not the most convenient, especially when it became winter time. The roads were really bad, but I made it work and I'm glad that I made it work because it was kind of like my little outlet um, away from living with them. But we are going to continue on with the living situation. So... Prior to moving into the apartment, I had been super duper anxious about moving in um, because I struggle with anxiety a lot and I just was not at all looking forward to it because I hated how much her boyfriend had been around. He gave me really weird, creepy vibes in my opinion, um, but that was just me. And because of those weird vibes, I just wasn't looking forward to it. It was really overwhelming. But the nice thing about it was I did have my own room. So it was a three room layout and then we me and my roommate from last year had shared a bathroom and then the third roommate had her own bathroom so we moved in and i was very anxious to do so um the first few months was okay it was a little bit awkward because they had moved in about a month before me and i moved in extremely last minute because i just wanted to enjoy my time at home and like be able to film youtube videos and all that as much as i could so i moved in a day before school started but it didn't really matter because we were online anyways so everything's fine you know it's not the worst situation not the best situation but we're continuing on and everything's fine so flash forward about three weeks into living into that apartment um my we'll call her roommate one so roommate one is the roommate that i lived with my freshman year in the dorm and roommate two is the roommate that was next door to us in the past year that we met and became friends with and then decided to sign the apartment with so roommate one got into a huge fight with roommate two and just was completely unhappy with living with her didn't like this situation thought she was super annoying like would complain to me and talk about her to me all the time and i was like "Ooh, this is not that good because she's talking pretty badly about her and yeah stuff got really awkward tension definitely rose in the apartment and so one day I was on a meeting business call because I run um, a student organization at my school for like peer group support um, and stuff like that. I'll talk about that in a little, a little more in depth in a different video maybe, but yeah, so I was in a meeting. I'm sitting in my room, I'm in a meeting, and I hear screaming just like at the top of people's lungs, like really bad fighting and i'm like oh my goodness like what is going on it was like let's say it was 5 45 so it's 5 45 my meeting ends at 6 so i hear fighting and i thought it, it, i thought it was just for fun i thought it was just kind of a joke um and that they were just being loud and i was like okay that's fine well no so for the next 15 minutes i'm in this meeting stuff keeps going by and i start to hear a little bit about their conversation and they just a lot a lot was coming out and it's I cannot repeat any of it because it's not appropriate for the platform 
but a lot of the screaming and fighting was going so i let my meeting people know i was like hey guys i have to go my roommates are fighting pretty bad and i don't want to get a noise complaint so i'm gonna go see what's going on and they were like yeah of course go ahead like good luck so i walk out and they're in the kitchen just like screaming at each other and as soon as i walk out i was like is everything okay and the roommate two is crying roommate one is like really boiling like her blood was boiling and it was just it was a sight to see um and then they they both storm off into their opposite rooms and i'm like okay what is going on so roommate one and i the one that i lived in the past year and i just were gonna hang out anyways and watch a movie so we just kind of let it fizzle out and start to hang out we're watching this movie and then roommate two unexpectedly comes to my room opens the door and is like if you guys have a problem meet with me you need to tell me and you know i was switzerland in this situation i was like i don't have a problem with you i really don't know what's going on i know you guys lived together about a month before when i moved in if something happened like let me know but i can be the mediator and let's just like talk this out because obviously screaming and yelling at each other and saying not nice things is not going to get us anywhere so we sit down in a kumbaya circle and start to talk everything out and this was a four hour long conversation keep in mind i had nothing to do with the situation it was completely between the two of them i was just playing the mediator to make sure no one ripped each other's heads off so that happens um and we agree that if anything a lot of it had just built up over time because neither of them were the type of people to express their um frustrations i guess and roommate one was especially that type of person that would just let things build up build up build up until she exploded um and that was kind of what happened so we all mutually agreed in the situation once we had kind of figured stuff out that we weren't going to let that ever happen again um and this is a really important thing to note because this is going to come back later in the story so we all agreed to never let that happen again that it was just it just wasn't productive and if we ever had a problem or like a little issue that we would just be open communication and talk about it um and stuff seemed good after that it was a little bit awkward it took a few months for stuff i would say to fully return back to normal with like the whole um way the roommate stuff worked out and just it took a while for the awkwardness to fizzle back out between those two and again i was just there i was kind of switzerland um so as the year progresses, it's just, it's not terrible, but it wasn't the best. We all were just kind of doing our own things and flash forward towards the end of the year. So I was obviously really busy. You guys might not know this, but um, I currently have three jobs at my university. And during the time um, I had started to apply for these jobs, so that's the the point in the story was i was in this application process for a lot of different things figuring out trying to graduate early all that good stuff and we were all constantly home because of being on online school so tensions definitely started to rise because we were always home and like it got a little bit complicated because it's just life happens and sometimes people are loud sometimes people aren't some people have a different style of living and all of that good stuff so roommate one the roommate from when i was a freshman um when we lived together and roommate two started to get really close and i was just kind of doing my own thing because i was really busy like i said trying to apply for these things and figure everything out um and i didn't enjoy spending my time with them as much just because they like to do things that i didn't really like to do um and so I just kind of branched off from them and hung out with myself and I focused on YouTube and like all my online friends and all that stuff. And they didn't really understand that. So they started to get really close and I didn't have a problem with that because it kept them both occupied and I honestly didn't mind being on my own a lot and just doing my own thing. But this quickly became an issue. So one night, this is where it all, this is where it all blows up, I guess. Um, one night I was sitting in my room and our walls are extremely thin. Um, and I was on the phone with, I believe I was on the phone to my sister. And so while I was on the phone to my sister, I hear whispering in the hallway and I'm like, hold on. Um, and so I go and stand by my door and 
I listen in because what else would you do? Because you can clearly tell they're whispering, but they're not quiet enough where you can't hear them. So I stand by my, my door and I just kind of listen in. And then I go outside into the hallway. I tiptoe my way into the hallway and I, I listen in. And I hear them talking behind my back about me in my kitchen where I can clearly hear it. So I'm that type of person that if you have a problem, I would just rather you say it to my face than talk behind my back. And I'm going to ask you about it because if there's an issue like we had agreed at the beginning of the year, we're going to figure it out. And that's the best way. So I tell my sister I've got to go and figure this out. And I go into the hallway and I'm like, hi, uh, I can hear you guys talking because our walls are really thin. If you have an issue with me, can you please just tell me what it is? And roommate one blows up like literally blows a storm she just started yelling and screaming and i was like what is going on um all these things that she had thought that i had been doing wrong or doing bad and let me tell you what a few of these things are well that is where it gets interesting she basically said that I was too loud all the time, um, that I was on the phone all the time, and that I was being completely disrespectful of her space, and that I didn't deserve the jobs that I was getting. And then she just started to attack me as a person. And I completely understand the phone thing. It's because we did have thin walls, so I did make an effort to be quieter. But I told her, I was like, why didn't you just tell me to be quiet? Like. I, I don't understand why you didn't just knock on my door and be like, hey, can you quiet down a little bit? I'm trying to study or something. But here's the thing. So whenever I would talk to my family or my friends, it would always be after school hours because I wanted to be respectful of her time. She would study at anywhere from like 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. at crazy hours of the night when it's supposed to be your free time where you're supposed to like you know, wind down from school and that's when I would talk to people on the phone. And yeah, our walls were thin, but she also, in my opinion, shouldn't have been studying and could have just easily knocked on my door and told me to quiet down. So all this stuff is blowing up. She's yelling at me and screaming at me and I was like, all of these are issues where you could have just solved them in the moment. I don't understand why you just didn't come and tell me them right away and why you're just blowing up at me. Like, okay, let's sit down and figure this out. She storms out of the kitchen. I was like, okay, or not. So I just, you know, continue going on about my day. And she's so like, who? she's so, she left. So she leaves the apartment. I was going to go and like see what was up. And I was going to give her some time to, you know, cool off, whatever. And then go actually have a civil conversation with her after a few hours well she left the apartment um and went to her boyfriend's and i was like okay well guess we're not having that conversation guess she doesn't want to talk to me so i figured she would come to me eventually well one day goes by one week goes by two weeks go by and nothing she gave me the silent treatment she avoided me and I was like, okay, you know, I guess we, we don't really need to talk and that's fine. Um, but stuff just started to get very, very petty. And sh so basically the way our parking spaces worked was let's imagine this little box here is a parking space and then there's another one here. So it was kind of like double parked in. So we would only talk to each other when one had to move their car so that the other could get out. And that was just how we figured stuff out. It, that was our process. We never really talked or anything um, after that. And it was just really, it was silly. But the thing is, after that, I did try to make a difference and hope that she would kind of come around. Um, but I would whisper on FaceTimes. I would never talk at a full volume. And she just made the environment really hostile and just not a good... You could literally feel in the air the toxicity of that apartment. It was completely awful. And so I would whisper and all this stuff. And so a few months goes by. It's now April. And we're finishing up school and it was just extremely bad for my mental health i'm gonna be honest it was super duper not a good situation to be in i was really stressed out over it i didn't feel comfortable in my apartment at all because roommate one and roommate two were still really good friends roommate two and i were like okay friends she didn't have any problem with me 
but roommate one absolutely despised me. And so it was just a really awkward dynamic and very uncomfortable to live in. And so after that, um, the few months go by and thank goodness school is ending and our lease actually wasn't up until this past month um, in July, but I just couldn't take it anymore. School was done, so I decided to move out. And obviously I am a grown adult. I don't have to tell anyone where I'm going, what I'm doing. As long as I pay my rent and pay the bills, it doesn't I have no obligation to tell them whether I'm living in the place or not living in the place. I was never going to, you know, mess them up or anything uh, or do anything harmful for our apartment. So I quietly packed all of my stuff. Um, Ava, Ava Clearwood was on FaceTime me for seven hours while I whispered to her and packed up my entire apartment. Um, while they were gone, I packed the stuff into my car. And one morning, um, I woke up and I left and I didn't live in the apartment anymore because it was really bad for just like me and just not a good situation. So I come home, everything's fine. Neither of them said anything to me. I'm assuming it took them a few days to realize that I'd no longer lived there because I just shut my door and it's not like we hung out anyways. So they never saw me at the apartment that often. But it was sad because it was my first apartment and I, you know, I did like living there and it was a good, it was a cute place and I never really got to have that like sappy goodbye. But so flash forward, I move home and I'm at home. They, they'll text me to pay rent and everything. Um, and that's it. They never really said anything about me moving out. So now it comes to summertime. So I'd moved most of my stuff out, but I still had left some stuff behind because I had signed my own apartment um, also in the same city and I wasn't going to drag my furniture home with me just to drag it back to my college town to move into a separate apartment. So I left it there. We go back and this was a few weeks ago. This was in July. We go back when I finally start my lease at my new apartment and um, so we go back when I start the new lease at my new apartment, my mom and I pack up a storage bin and we show up and they had asked me like, oh, when are you officially moving out? And I told them. So we get there, we walk in, the place is pitch black. They're both standing in the kitchen. I'm there with my whole family. My sister said hi and neither of them said anything to me. So I was like, okay, they're just ignoring us. I'm just going to ignore them. I'm going to get my stuff and go. I have, if you have nothing nice to say, you don't say it. So. I packed up all my stuff, we moved out, I gave my sister the lease and the keys to put on the kitchen counter um, when we left, and that was that. But the catch is, the entire time we were moving out our stuff, they both came out of their rooms and sat in the living room and stared at us and whispered about us behind her back while we're moving this stuff out. It was just very toxic, very petty, um, and like I said, if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say it. So. We put the lease and the keys on the apartment and I was finally done. I left. We go to my new apartment with all the furniture and stuff we had just moved out and lo and behold, I get a text from roommate number one. And this was the roommate that I lived with in the past and the one that yelled at me and was just very nasty to me. And so I get to my new apartment and I get a text from her seconds after I had moved out. and just saying some really awful things about the whole situation and yeah it just was pretty bad so flash forward to right now i am officially moved out i no longer am in association with them i'm waiting to tie up some loose ends just waiting on bills and stuff and hopefully that all runs smoothly and then i won't have to ever deal with them i plan on blocking them both um and just not really speaking to them ever again because it was a really traumatic experience and is not a good experience but I do have my own place I don't have any roommates next year and I'm very very excited about about it because you know I get to be myself I get to um have my own living space make it my own and just be more comfortable in who I am and more comfortable there because I don't have to deal with any external influences and where I live and I'm very very excited so that is Believe it or not, the short version of my crazy, interesting roommate experience. There's definitely so many little parts that I left out, but if I told you the whole story, we would have been here for an hour. Um, but yeah, so moral of the story is 
that is what was going on behind the scenes of last year's with the empty classroom chronicles i'm very grateful i had youtube as an outlet youtube really helped me um especially with my mental health especially getting through all of those things and i'm grateful that the experience happened because that's what kind of triggered the um watch this when series was because i would make those videos when i was struggling myself living in my own apartment so yeah moral of the story do your research if you are my age if you are moving to college make sure you get a good roommate make sure you establish good communication and boundaries because it's very important it will make the world of a difference and if you're in a toxic situation get out of it as soon as you can you owe no one an explanation um, of where you're going or why you're leaving as long as you're happy and as long as you are comfortable that is what you deserve so i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you liked the story times. I've got a million more story times, not about roommates, but I've got a million more story times about the time I had a stalker or um, the time, like my first boyfriend, my first kiss, all those good juicy stuff. Um, anything, any suggestions, leave behind in the comments or below, I guess. And I will make those because this was really fun for me to make and just like reflect on. I'm very excited for the future. But that's enough of me talking your ear off. Thank you guys again for watching. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the links in my description for Discord servers and for my partnership with Star Stable. And I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye!